Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you to our worship service here this morning. And uh, uh, we've sung this song before, and I always like to uh, uh, share. Uh, today is uh, the theme of the message is family issues. And so when I was looking at, at the Faith We Sing hymn book, what is something that, that talks about some of those family issues? Um, and it, it's this one. And so it's, it's hymn number 2051. And uh, the story I always like to share is uh, uh, when I was a pastor in Aurora, I had the, the blessing to baptize triplets. And the mom of those triplets chose this song to be sung during the worship service. It's a beautiful song. Um, we're not going to sing all, all of it, but we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 7. And, um, and so I invite you to stand if you are comfortable as we sing, I was there to hear your born and cry. opening prayer. Loving God, some of us come to this place full of anticipation and joy. Others come weary and tired. And some of us come here today wondering why we are even here. Renew us in your Holy Spirit. Remind us that your steadfast love follows us wherever we go. Increase our faith that we may not lose or become, become burdened by the challenges of life. Help us hear again the words of Christ. Whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, and mother. We are yours, O oh God. Thank you for claiming us as your own. Amen. Rise up, ye saints of God.
this is our opportunity to say hi to those gathered around us and make sure as you're waving, as you're saying hello, to wave and, and say hello to those joining on the live stream. So good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And after you've had an opportunity to say hello to those gathered around you, you may all be seated. So we have a, a couple of announcements uh, that want to share and, and lift up. Um, and I'm, I'm checking the live stream here. So we've got, we've got folks that are joining us all across the state and, and the country. And so it's, it's just great to have all of you joining us uh, on the live stream and glad that we have that opportunity to, to see all of you. Uh, a, an update, um, this comes from uh, Kim Witzke. Uh, Mary is in rehab at Swedish and is doing very well. Talking very good and her memory seems pretty good as well. Mary was answering a couple of Jeopardy questions before the contestants answered them. <laughs> She's back. She just needs to gain some strength and practice standing, swinging her legs to get out of bed and using a walker to get around. They hope to release her uh, the 21st of this month. So, uh, definitely uh, some great news. Uh, it's going to be slow. There's going to be a lot of uh, um, um, a lot of patients, uh, and and we all know that Mary is bounding in patience. She is a very patient person. So uh, uh, I, I say that very <laughs> facetiously. Uh, but uh, we lift up the Witskies in our prayer thoughts and. and uh, um, she's making very slow progress, but good progress. So wanted to, to share that. And, and certainly if, if you've got something, those of you watching on the live stream, you certainly can send me a text or uh, I have access to my email here um, or even on the Facebook Live, I certainly will share that as well. Um, I do want to lift up a couple of, of prayer, uh, prayer updates. So if you're looking over your bulletin here, uh, a couple of prayer concerns uh, that um, after we printed this off, uh, we're seeing some good news. Uh, so I, I talked with Penny Strong and um, her uh, great granddaughter, Nova Schuyler Strong. If you remember, uh, she was put on the prayer list because she was born very premature. She is now out of the hospital and, and is doing as good as can be expected as someone that is premature. So, uh, but she definitely thanks you for all the prayers. Uh, received an, an email from uh, Loretta and uh, her friend Tasha, uh, which is listed under there on the, on the cancer, uh, for right now is cancer free. And so she is feeling very good about that. And so those are a couple of uh, updates on, on where things are going uh, with those folks and we wanna lift them up. Uh, we're going to get to Bible school here in a second, but just as a reminder that we've got that, to, it starts tonight. And, um, and so I remind you, if you are participating in Bible school or any of those things, do not look at the temperature guide of what, what the temperature is going to be. What don't do, just don't do it. Think cold thoughts. Think cool thoughts. You'll be fine. Um, and then um, we are planning on having a church council meeting after church next week. Uh, for anyone that, that can attend. And we will also send out the Zoom link if anyone would like to join us that way. Uh, let me just check here uh, if there's any updates. But I would like to turn it over to you. Uh, yes, Lois. So yeah, lift up Tracy Raymig, who uh, recently has been waiting to move into the fourth floor, the rehab portion of the hospital, and hopefully, hopefully we'll get released at the end of the week. Um, but we lift up Tracy in our prayer thoughts. Um, other? Yes, Al. So we celebrate your 61st wedding anniversary yesterday, and uh, so that means that Last year, you were one of those many that celebrated those milestone events in quarantine. And so, but congratulations to you. Happy anniversary. Other sharing here this morning. Yes. And 
and it's Berkeley's birthday today, so happy birthday to her. <laughs> I bet I bet they are, but they, they might be on the live stream, but you know, I, I, I doubt that, but yeah. <laughs> so we lift up Berkeley and, and her birthday today. Yeah. Oh. Other sharing here this morning. Yes, Jason. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, good luck uh, with your, your final visit. Uh, I know that uh, um, uh, the surgery went well and you've been working very hard on your rehab and ready to. Uh, I, have you been waiting to, to start jogging again? Yeah, I, I know that was something that you weren't, you had to kind of put on hold. Uh, so, uh, so here in two weeks, you leave today for Salt Lake City, and we hope that all goes well uh, with your reports. So, other sharing here this morning. Yes, Gwen, or Nicole. Yeah. Well, we've been certainly praying for you, Gwen, and, and uh, you've got uh, got another month to go, and, and hopefully these tests kind of point you in the right direction. So, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Nicole. Other sharing here this morning? And uh, um, I was informed here this morning uh, uh, that... Uh, uh, Mary Vitruba, her daughter-in-law, when they moved down to Texas, recently passed away, uh, and and so we want to, uh, we don't do not know many of the details, um, but was just informed of it here this morning. Um, I know that Mary often watches us on the live stream, and and will be coming back for the arrangements, uh, but we will lift up uh, the Vitruba family and, and Mary in our prayer thoughts. Um, uh, the daughter-in-law is from Shadron, and so they'll, they're working with the funeral home up there, and, and uh, we'll probably know uh, more information here in the future. So we, we lift up Mary and, and, uh, and our prayer thoughts here this morning. Any other announcements or birthdays or anniversaries? Well, we have, uh, we, we definitely, we've got an anniversary couple here, so let us sing happy anniversary. Certainly hope all goes well with Berkeley and her birthday. So, all right. Uh, and would you like like us to watch the video again for Bible school? If you have time, that'd be okay. Uh, you want to go ahead and, and share it and lift up the video for Bible school. If they're ready. on a ride they'll never forget. Get on board the Rocky Railway. Your church will be on track at Scene Play Express. Get ready for high energy fun at Locomotion Games. Experience impactful Bible lessons and Bible adventures. 
You'll have amazing discoveries at Imagination Station. Take a glimpse into the world of five awesome kids who learn that Jesus' power pulls us through. The best part of summer is full steam ahead at Rocky Railway. So Jesus' power pulls us all through. And that's the theme. Um, tonight at 5.30, we're going to have our box supper. And we will still take kids to sign up. And we do need a few more kids. We have um, great response with our youth leaders. But it wouldn't hurt us to have just a few more little kids. So if you have a, oh, a grandchild or a neighbor or a friend that has um, an elementary student, We'd love to have them. So we hope we get more people to sign up. Um, and we're ready to roll. We're going to have a meeting after church downstairs for anybody that's helping. That's the youth and adults. So that we can get our supplies and get organized and get ready to go. Um, anybody could come at 7.30. We're especially the parents. We want them to come because we're going to have a video with the highlights of Bible school that day. And it's our first try on today. So... But it'll be every night through Thursday. So if you're curious what's going on, that would be a, a fun thing to do. And I'm going to ask for your prayers for Bible school so that it's all successful and we reach some little hearts. So, thanks. Anything else, Seth? Did I forget anything? Nope. And I want to thank, Vic, thank you, Vicki, for getting all of this organized and, and especially uh, this year has been a bigger challenge uh, you know, one of the things you realize uh, with the pandemic, there's always other things to think about. It's like, oh, okay, how do we handle this? And we do this part and that part because it's very different than what we've done before. So thank you for your leadership. Appreciate it. Um, L Lindsay. Yes. Are we having special music before or after? Right now. Right now. Okay. All right. I, could quite, I knew we were having special music. Didn't get into bulletin. Uh, so we invite Cherry to come up for special music.
Now we invite our children to come forward for our children's time. Marley, what color balloon would you like? Pink. David, what color balloon would you like? We don't have blue. We got purple, we got pink, we got white. And we got red. Red? Okay. All right. There we go. All right. <clears throat> well, you know how balloons work, right? No? starts out, starts out really small, you know, this size, and then it goes all the way out here. In fact, we can kind of do that. Let me get a pin. We can kind of see that. So we, can, we can write something on here. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write high. Oh. Yeah, I need to have a flat space. There we go. So, okay, and we'll, we'll see how well that works. All right, ready? Well, kind of says hi. One of the nice things about a balloon is it goes out into the world. See that? Where I, I wrote high, it goes out to the world to kind of explore. But here's the fun part. What happens if I let go of the air? It lets all the air out and the balloon but comes. Have, but you have to tie it. You're right. But the balloon comes back. So, just kind of like, it, maybe if I had a boomerang, how, sometimes the boomerangs go all the way out to kind of explore the world and then it comes back. Uh, I, I didn't trust letting go of the balloon and it wouldn't come back. But one of the things that we find in today's passage about Jesus is he says that sometimes we can go out and explore things. We can explore things at school. We can explore things with other family members. 
we can explore things at Bible school. We can explore things uh, at camp. We can explore things like your sister is when she goes to Utah. Uh, we can explore things, but the best part about the balloon is it comes right back. And that is a great definition of family, is that we can go those, do those things and then Jesus says we can come back and feel loved and at home. And that's the nice thing about that. Okay. All right. So we're going to be talking about that with our lesson here today. Are you ready to pray? Let us pray. Say, Dear God, thank you for your lessons on love. Amen. All right. Can I have it? You can. <laughs> I made David's day when I gave him a balloon. He got to keep it, so. Come to our prayer time, and uh, we'll start out with a prayer of confession, which is printed in the bulletin. Um, it's also on the screen. We'll have a, a moment of silent prayer. And then I will uh, lift up some words as a pastoral prayer, and then we invite you to end our moment with our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, forgive us when we see your miracles all around us and still doubt your power, presence, and love. Forgive us when we treat this world and each other with careless indifference or with malice. You who have created the most wondrous things from the smallest of particles can create in our hearts confidence and hope. From our lives, you can fashion the most delightful miracles that can serve you through acts of mercy and kindness. Free us, Lord, to receive your blessings and having received them, to find the numerous ways in which we can serve you. Heal our wounded hearts Hear our cries. Come to us and bring us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Lord, we, we stand, we sit, we watch, we listen. We are in your presence. We're at this point of mystery, trying to figure out how prayer works. We, we, we've seen its actions. We, uh, we've had conversations with people that, that said that w they know prayer works. We know that prayer has, has, has sustained us in, in both good times and bad. We know that, that prayer works in, 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 in mystery, mysterious ways. Gracious God, it has, it has brought people out of our prayer list. It has, uh, um, it has provided phone calls. It has... Uh, given us the ability to uh, withstand so much pressure at work. It has given us those opportunities to um, worship at home for over 15 months. It has uh, uh, sustained us in, in moments that, that truly we didn't think it were possible. Prayer works. And yet it continues to be a mystery. 
We explore uh, your means. We explore ways that, that we continue to, to walk and, and, and try to figure out your grace. But in the end, we rely on your faith, our, our faith, to believe in you and know that you lift us up in these wonderful and momentous times. Prayer works. Be with us, not only for the prayers that we lift up here today, but in the future, especially now as we pray to you our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us sing, Happy the Home When God is There, verse 1 of 445. Well, it is summertime, and uh, uh, for many of us, that means that um, we're thinking about vacation, especially after um, not having the opportunity to do much traveling last year. We're thinking about it. We're given that opportunity. We're, we're examining those means. And so here recently, um, oh, thank you very much. I forgot to, uh, last week, one of the things that we, we mentioned we were trying to remember what we were supposed to remember. And one of those was uh, handing out the attendance pads. And so I apologize. We didn't get that mentioned in, in the announcement time. But we've got the attendance pads passing around. So thank you very much. So um, back to the message here. One of the things, uh, I came across a, uh, a story that was told by a United Methodist pastor uh, about a vacation that he went on. And this is obviously one that he had shared uh, and taken place before the pandemic, but uh, uh, let me share with you his story. We were traveling one summer in the Pocono Mountains, and like a good United Methodist family, attended church while we were on vacation. One lazy Sunday, we found our way to a little United Methodist church. It was a hot day, and the folks were nearly out in the pews. The preacher was preaching on and on until all of a sudden he said, the best years of my life have been spent in the arms of another man's wife. The congregation let out a gasp, came to immediate attention, and the dozing usher in the back row dropped his hymn book. Then the preacher said, it was my mother. <laughs> the congregation teeter teetered a little and managed to follow along as the sermon concluded. I filed this trick away in my memory, a great way to get the congregation's attention back when it had been lost. Sure enough, the next summer on a lazy Sunday I was preaching and the flies were buzzing around and the ushers were sinking lower and lower in their seats in the back row until I could barely see them. Then I remembered our experience in the Pocono Mountains and I said in a booming voice, the best years of my life have been spent in the arms of another man's wife. Sure enough, I had their attention. One of the ushers in the back row sat up so fast, he hit his head on the back of the pew in front of him. I had them. But you know something? I forgot what came next. All I could think to say was, and for the life of me, I can't remember her name. <laughs> now that I have your attention, 
Let's talk about family issues. Specifically, a passage that is not so simple to understand. And we'll get to that here in a second. But first, let's talk about summer. Um, we're talking about love, particularly uh, how and why love is discussed in the Gospels. It's our summer sermon series. And today we have a very interesting take on how, on how family issues are manifested in our Gospel lesson. So, Sue, would you read it for us? I will be reading from Mark 3, um, 19 through 30. Jesus and Beelzebul. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If the kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if the house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, he is div- this and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying to be tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but in guilt of an eternal, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they have said, he has an unclean spirit. Please add your blessings to this reading. Sue, could you continue to read to verse 35? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> then his ma- mother and his brother came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Thank you. Thank you. This is a passage that that just appears all over the map. Uh, I mean, first you have this discussion about demons and Jesus being demon-possessed. And and then you have this interchange about tying up the strong man of the house. And and then we can't forget about this lesson about blaspheming the Holy Spirit and discussion about eternal sins. And I'll tell you, that portion has baffled biblical scholars for centuries. And then finally, Jesus appears to reject family. I mean, turn your back on them. Delete them from your, friend, from your Facebook friend list. Shun them on social media. Turn your back forever. I mean, this is indeed a passage about family issues. Now, since we're talking about love, specifically love and the Gospels, um, I was thinking about what can we glean from this text? And it really has to do with our definition of family. So I looked up the dictionary, and, and there's three definitions of family in the dictionary. The first one is a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. That makes sense. Second one, all the descendants of a common ancestor. That kind of reminds me of my hobby of genealogy, about figuring out who's related to whom. 
And then the last one, a group of related things. Kind of reminds me of my high school science class where we found out that we are in the family of hominid in the order of primates, which means that we are not in the family of fungus. Did I get that right, Heidi? All right. So, no, but it's, a, it's that idea of being part of the same the fa group, the family, and how we're related. We also find this same definition in languages, romance language. Um, Spanish is a romance language. My wife, who speaks Spanish, says that sometimes she can understand words in Italian, Portuguese, and Latin because it's part of that same family of romance languages. So when you think about it, Jesus is stretching the definition of family into a group of related things. And family, for Jesus, means discipleship. And who's doing the discipling? Well, he answers it. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. One of my favorite songs is the wedding song. Now, you might be thinking of the wedding march or Pachelbel's Canon or A Thousand Years by Christina Perry, who made famous for the uh, uh, Vampire Diaries. It's now being used for weddings today, but no. I'm talking about the wedding song. And the song goes like this.
here's the background of that song. It was written by Paul Stokey of Peter, Paul, and Mary fame. And um, he performed this song, wrote it and performed it for Peter's wedding, when he was the best man in his wedding. Now here's the fascinating part. Paul Stokey's name does not appear as the author, either on the record or the sheet music. Neither does he receive any of the royalties. That is because he says that after he prayed, he was given, he was given the song. All he was required to do was to allow the pencil to move across the page. The song is a celebration of the love of a newlywed couple and their union with God. On his website, Stokey says, into every songwriter's life comes a song, the source of which cannot be explained by personal experience. When I read that, I thought, how much money has he lost out on? I mean, every wedding, even the performance that was listed up right here during worship and over live stream, he didn't get any royalties for it. Now listen to this, and you might get a sense of the motivation of why he chose this. At one point, Stokey was going through a time of searching and crisis. He was disturbed by the hypocrisy in life. And so he turned to an old Greenwich Village friend by the name of Bob Dylan for advice. And two things that Dylan st said to him stood out in his mind. One, go for a long walk in the country. And two, read the Bible. Paul took the advice. He walked in the country and it helped him sort out his priorities. And he read the Bible. And although his folk group had sung several spirituals and gospel tunes, Stuckey had never opened a Bible before. But now he read through the entire New Testament and parts of the Old. He had a hard time with some of it. It was slow and often mysterious. But something real happened in Paul Stuckey's life then and today he is a living as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I think only a disciple would be able to give up the royalties of a song that Lois told me it was sung at just about every single wedding over a decade in Los Angeles, correct? That's what you shared with me. So what does it mean to be a part of the family of God? Well, it means working for the will of God. And what does the will of God look like? Well, let's examine the word love. Um, as we know, love can be translated many different ways. A and I want to say this. English is a really boring language because we have one word, love, that can be translated at least eight different ways in Greek. Uh, take, for example, storge. Storgi is often translated as familial love, but it's, it's actually kind of like natural, instinctual affection. So you kind of see why it gets translated as familial love. And it often refers to as a love between a parent and an offspring, or vice versa. But storgi, or familial love, or natural, instinctual, affectionate love, often applies to love between family members, friends, pets, owners, companies, colleagues. Storge love is, is kind of like the love between really exceptional friends. Now it's not romantic, it, it's a love for the desire to care compassionately. And, and this is more than platonic, it's, it's more complicated than that. It's, it's a, I would call it a passionate compassion for someone, something, or some object. For anybody that's ever served in the military, that is the love that keeps you fighting for your brother and sister in arms. Anyone that's ever served in a volunteer organization, well, that's what keeps you going to that Masonic meeting or flipping hamburgers for Kiwanis. When I walk by the log cabin, I see the same people sitting in the exact same spot eating breakfast. I'm guessing that those people have a passion for the log cabin, as they do for the people around that breakfast table. And pets, I mean, it's that love to our pets. Maybe not so much a cat to us, but maybe definitely a dog to us. I would agree with that. Now, do you see how boring English is? I mean, we just have one word for love to talk about something so complicated as storge. 
So when Jesus says, and looking at those who sat around him, he said, here is my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus is talking about this kind of love. A love for someone that you may not be related to, but you are related to within the realm of discipleship. And you would do all you could for that person and the organization you are part of because you know it is the will of God. Dan Clark writes of this storge love in a story that he shared for uh, chicken soup, one of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. He says, A friend of mine named Paul received an automobile from his brother at Christmas time. On Christmas Eve, when Paul came out of his office, a street urchin was walking around the shiny new car admiring it. Is this your car, mister? He asked. Paul nodded. My brother gave it to me for Christmas. The boy was astounded. You mean your brother gave it to you and it didn't cost you nothing? Boy, I wish. He hesitated. Of course, Paul knew what he was going to wish for. He was going to wish he had a brother like that. But what the lad said jarred Paul all the way down to his heels. I wish, the boy went on, that I could be a brother like that. Paul looked at the boy in astonishment, and then impulsively he added, Would you like a ride in my automobile? Oh, yes, I'd love that. And after a short ride, the boy turned and with his eyes aglow said, Mister, would you mind driving in front of my house? And Paul smiled a little and thought he knew what the lad wanted. He wanted to show his neighbors that he could ride home in a big automobile. But Paul was wrong again. Uh, would you stop uh, at, at where those two steps are? The boy asked. He ran up the steps. Then in a little while, Paul heard him coming back. But he was not coming fast. He was carrying his little crippled brother. He sat him down on the bottom step, then sort of squeezed up against him and pointed to the car. There she is, buddy, just like I told you upstairs. His brother gave it to him for Christmas, and it didn't cost him a cent. And someday I'm going to give you one just like that. Then you can see for yourself all the little pretty things in the Christmas windows that I've been telling you all about. Paul got out and lifted the lad into his front seat of his car. Then the shining-eyed older brother climbed in beside him, and the three of them began a memorable holiday ride together. That Christmas Eve, Paul learned what Jesus meant when he had said, it is more blessed to give. Doing the will of God means being adopted into God's family. And being adopted into God's family means becoming a disciple. Now, it might mean being blood-related, but more than being blood-related, it is our passion, it is our compassion for all of God's children. Amen. We come to the portion of our service where we give back to God. And uh, um, Cherry, did you find some ushers for us this morning? We got one? All right, so we, do we have another? Vo we have two volunteers for the ushers. Thank you so much. Uh, let us have this opportunity to give back to God.
here come to the police station. This is just a token of what we can give back to you for all the blessings that you've shared with us, the opportunities that you've been part of our life, the opportunities to, uh, to share in prayer and community and certainly in storge love. Thank you for expanding this knowledge for all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. I ask you to please remain standing. Um, and turn to page 17. To page 17 in the red hymnal. On page 17, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And you may all be seated. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Invite those that are joining on the live stream at home to make sure that you have your elements present and uh, the communion elements that we have of bread and the cup. Uh, I will, will share with you as uh, you participate in the worship service with us here today. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to you, shared it with those at the table and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. couple of words of instruction. Um, we are going, for the time being, we're going to, for those of you uh, that are sitting in the sanctuary, uh, we're going to continue to use the communion rails uh, for communion. And so we have spaced them out in socially distanced opportunities. And so for those of you sitting on this side of the church, we invite you to come forward, uh, participate. We have them in individual cups, the bread and the juice. And these are disposable cups. And, and on either side, you can place them in the trash cans. Um, for those joining on the live stream at home, uh, 
I will be then sharing this bread and this cup with you. And so that will be your opportunity to be a part of our communion service here this morning. Uh, with everybody, whether you're watching at home, whether you are here today, I want to remind you of what John Wesley was very keen on. Um, this is an open communion table. No church membership. Uh, there is, there's, uh, we're not going to check your... Um, vaccination card. We're, we're not going to do those things. I mean, this is, an, this is a, a table for you to understand, to be part of what we learned here today, storge love. Doing the will of God. A love about being part of a larger community of discipleship and what that means. Uh, think of it as a love note. Think of it as, as an opportunity to practice what we continue to say to ourselves. And so um, I invite you, whether you are at home or whether you're in the sanctuary, to be a part of this uh, wonderful opportunity to receive communion, to receive this love, and to do the will of God. Amen. So I invite you now to come forward for our time of communion. And for those joining on the live stream, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And for those sitting in the pews, if any of you need assistance to have communion brought out to you, please, please raise your hand, let us know, and um, we can have someone bring communion out to you.
If you are comfortable with standing, would you st please stand for our benediction? And uh, just to remind you, um, we're going to have a meeting for leaders for Vacation Bible School downstairs, is it? Uh, down in the fellowship hall. And so we invite uh, the leaders to, to join us shortly. Let us read together. I get to go now in peace, knowing the miracles that God has produced in my life. I'm assured that there are still more miracles to come. I bear witness to God's love to all whom I meet. In the name of the Creator, the Holy One who resides with me always, I get to go in peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, uh, just like last week, the gift of love, uh, let's sing verses 1 and 2. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 of the gift of love. <laughs>